Hello, in today's video we'll be replacing the starter on this 2001 Pontiac Trans Am, which is the same as a Chevy Camaro and similar to a 4.8 and a 5.3 Chevy GMC truck. One thing you want to check on these GM vehicles is to make sure that the security light does not stay on when you turn the key, because that will create a situation where the car won't crank also. And of course you want to check things like the battery voltage and cables for any corrosion or loose cables. And as you can see, this battery has enough power that the starter should crank. Well, let's begin removing the starter. We'll start by lifting and supporting the vehicle with jack stands. Now that we got it lifted and supported, you want to be sure to disconnect the battery. For this terminal, we'll need an 8mm or 5 wrench to loosen the post, and the negative is the safest terminal to disconnect. And now to locate the starter. This starter is located on the passenger side tucked in just below the exhaust manifold. First thing we'll need to remove is its connection to the low oil level light. You'll want to use a pick or a screwdriver to lift the tab up and pull back on the connection to disconnect it. Now we'll need to loosen the two bolts to the starter, which I'll give you a good look at here. One is further in while the other one sits closer to us. For both of these starter bolts we'll need a 13mm socket. And for the bolt that is more tucked in, we'll need to use a longer extension to get to it. Now that we got that one loose, we can loosen the other. For this one, I use a shorter 3 inch extension. And now I remove the other bolt that's more tucked in completely. When removing the second bolt, you'll want to hold up the starter as you remove it. And now we can maneuver the starter out of the mounting area. Now to lower the starter enough to get to the starter connections, we'll want to get it past the transmission lines. For this, just push back on the transmission lines a little to get it out, but be careful not to force it or damage the lines. And now we have full access to the starter connections. For this, we'll need an 8mm or 5 16 for the crank wire connection and a 13mm for the battery cable connection. I start by removing the crank wire connection because it's a thin wire and you don't want it supporting the weight of the starter. And now that we got it loose, we could just remove the nut and the wire. Next, we can remove the battery connection with a 13 millimeter socket. Now that we got it loose, we can remove the nut by hand and slide the wire off. And with that, the starter is off. This is the starter I'll be replacing it with. I prefer to use new starters, so I'm going with that. And we want to transfer the heat shield from the original if it has it. This protects the solenoid from exhaust manifold heat, 
which can cause heat soak issues on starters. And this heat shield just lights up enough. And now we can place it on a new one. You just want to make sure that the clips line up with the starter housing. We're now ready to install our new starter. Let's start by removing the new nuts and lock washers off of the solenoid. We'll start by installing our battery cable wire first, and then the lock washer, and finally the nut. Once you got them on, we can tighten them using a ratchet and a 13mm socket. There's a tab on the wire and a recess on the solenoid that you'll want to line up together before doing a final tightening. And next we can install our crank wire plus the lock washer and finally the nut. Now we can just tighten it with the 8mm socket and ratchet. It doesn't have to be that tight. Now that we got that done, we can slide the starter back in and mount it, and insert the two starter bolts to hold it in place. You always want to make sure that you start them by hand only, and you want to get them in as far as you can. Now that we got them both in, we can tighten them using the ratchet. You want to tighten them by going back and forth, not just fully tightening one and then the other. And now we can do the final tightening. And now we can reinstall our oil light connector. And finally reconnect the battery.
And now let's see what happens. And that right there is a happy sound. And no, I don't mean those chimes. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please click that like button to support my video and channel. And don't forget to subscribe.